Hello, my name is Reeve Andrews and this is The Art of Reduction. Welcome back. Today we have a great episode for you today, guys. I don't know about you, but as a barber shop, it gets kind of intimidating when a woman walks in to the shop asking for a haircut. Well, I wanna show you guys that it's a great opportunity to A, add some different type of clientele to your, your shop, and B, just to be able to give someone a service who's right then and right there. So we're gonna be focusing on a lot of sheer work today, and more importantly, just the different textures and types of hair that women kinda of come into the shop with and uh, just how I conduct myself personally when I have a woman in the chair, and uh, more importantly, just how to make people feel comfortable um, while they're here. So like I said, um, a lot of women these days are wanting masculine haircuts, and so I wanna kind of showcase that today. So I have a great model to name. Her name is Katie. She has beautiful hair, very unique style, and I'm really excited to showcase this haircut today. Katie, can you come on over? Great seeing you, thank you so much. We'll take a seat right here. So, like I said, I have a lot of women who actually come into our barber shop, which is mostly devo devoted for men, but they're wanting more of a masculine haircut. And just as the world progresses, as women get more and more power, which is so awesome, I love that they're expressing themselves more and more and feeling more confident inside a barber shop. So, number one, I just personally try to treat them like a human being. Nothing crazy, nothing different. So I uh, just always just try to keep a just a professional attitude when I'm with the female. My touch is a little softer. My voice is a little softer. My energy is even a little softer. And it's so important to kind of melt into your clientele and what they're giving you. Though you could tell Katie has a pretty cool sense of style, has amazing colored hair. And that's one reason I wanted to kind of bring her in today. Um, number one, kind of hard to cut hair that has a full color like this. Kind of hard to see some of the different lines and different um, gradual um, shading that you, we create. Though it's going to be a really cool haircut. Again, this haircut's kind of hard for me, so I, I'm also going to always be bringing um, some difficulty to the art of reduction. I'm not trying to be here cutting cookie cutter hair. I want to learn too, so that's why I'm trying to bring really hard, unique hair. So number one, usually my clients, if I have a female, I will instantly always take her to the shampoo bowl. That shampoo bowl really kind of breaks down, um, I like to say just the sense of touch, you know. I would much rather go introduce myself, have a little consultation, than instantly take them to the shampoo bowl to get rinsed out, shampooed, and more importantly, so I could feel the scalp, feel the hair, and more importantly, I could kind of break that bond of touch. Instead of, hi, I'm Reeve, straight into cutting hair, Hi, I'm Reeve, come back, let me relax you, talk to you, get to know you. So I encourage everyone just to have a nice little con or conversation, consultation, go rinse your client out, bring him back, and then start the haircut. That's always what I like to do with new clients. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna get her wet and I'm gonna bring her all the way back. And let me show you a really cool way how I like to find the bangs. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna just mark off her bangs and then I'm going to kind of work through the haircut. So let me go ahead and kind of show you how I like to find the bangs on my client. Pretty simple way. I like to kind of get them to the side. I go straight back with my comb. And what I do is I put that comb right on top of their head and leave it, okay? So I don't know if you could tell, but where that comb and that head of hair meet, that little angle that it creates, that's her bang. So what I do is I instantly put my finger where that angle is, I take my comb and I'm gonna comb right through those bangs. So let me pull this out. Again, with colored hair, it kind of gets a little hard to kind of part, it gets a little bit of tangles, but you just have to be patient and work your way. And like I said, clean parts equal clean haircuts. So let's make sure we get all this. And let me, I'm gonna swing her around to kind of show you what I'm doing. So I'm even bringing this all the way down. So if you could see my part, it comes all the way down. So even kind of grabbing some of the fringe on the sides. And what I like to do is I'm instantly just gonna take my clip and I'm gonna clip this hair out of the way. Whatever you do to one side, we're gonna to do to the other. So I'm gonna take this all the way down. Get some of this hair. That's considered her bangs out of the way. It's a little finer on this side, so hopefully this clip will hold. And then what I like to do is I like to get these last bit of the bangs out of her face so she could see and be comfortable through the majority of the service. 
And number one, I'm just, I like to use, keep the bangs last. So here we go. So I have her bangs completely marked out and now I'm gonna transition into the haircut. But what I like to do with this haircut is we're gonna keep a lot of bangs. She wants to be able to run her hands through it. And I'm, my goal is I'm going to reduce a lot of this weight and link back here, and then I'm gonna start doing her undercut. So we're gonna do an undercut on each side of her hair through here, and it's gonna come all the way to the back to a nice little point, really tight and tapered, leaving a lot of texture, movement through the top, keeps it feminine, keeps it soft, but we're gonna have a lot of strong edges everywhere else where that kind of masculine feel comes from. So what I'm gonna do is I have her bangs marked off and I'm gonna get her just a little bit more wet. I'm pretty avant-garde when it comes to my scissor cutting. Um, I just like, I do, I, I do part the hair, but a lot of times I am just grabbing the hair and naturally going with the, what the hair wants to do and the flow of it. So again, I'm a cosmetologist by trade who turned into a barber. So I love scissor work. Today I'll be using my Hattori Hanzo seven and a half inch um, swivel thumb. Really allows me to really get some really cool angles without really hurting my wrist. And I really love these scissors. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just start bringing her up. And we're gonna start doing a lot of point cutting here. I'm gonna keep it flat on the top. And then as I transition down, we're gonna get a little tighter and tighter as we kind of come into our sectioning. So do it through this mohawk section, straight up. Straight up, trying to create some softness and texture as I pull through this hair. I really enjoy just how good these Hattori Hanzo scissors are. I never really, forever I just use $150 scissors. I cut a lot of beautiful hair with $150 scissors. But once I had the opportunity to touch some upper scale shears and upper scale um, metal, it really kind of changed the game. And more importantly, I think it's so important that now that all of our staff carries these Atori Hanzos because of how much they enjoyed loving them. So again, I'm just going through this haircut, taking off some of these dead ends. Again, she colors her hair, as we could tell. So I, those ends kind of get a little beat throughout the day, a little bit more than us who don't have much color in our hairs. So it's just very important, even though she wants to keep it nice and kind of long through this top, it's very important to go through and kind of trim, even up. And more importantly, so when I bring that tightness into this haircut, I don't have all that weight to deal with. So let's keep continue getting her wet. And once I get done with this mohawk section up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through and do a little bit more um, getting some guidelines put back into her so we could start really kind of focusing on the shape of this hair. So again, just going through, killing off any points, any dead ends, nice and quick. Again, this is a very free, fun top, trying to keep it fairly even through majority of this. And I'm gonna just do a couple point cuts as I go to kind of make sure everything is falling in place. And my point cutting, I'm sliding out. So I'm cutting and I'm sliding back. And that's how I could kind of go fast without taking a bunch of hair out. And it creates a really nice slip and cut as I go. Again, I remember I have all those bangs completely marked off. I'm not even getting close to her bangs because I want to do that at the very end. It's a very important part of her haircut. It's the first thing she sees when her, she opens her eyes. So again, I usually like to take some length and weight off the top before I do anything else with the haircut. Again, it just kind of gives me a little bit more of a visual on how this haircut's gonna turn out, the way her head shape works. And I'm just cascading this length all the way down. Okay. 
So we'll get back to the top of this, but this was just a good kind of breaking point, kind of breaking it down. You can already see it's starting to lay a little bit better, a little nicer. Let's kind of go over here. It looks a little thick down through here. And again, it's the art of reduction. I'm slowly changing her shape, slowly changing the consistency as we go. So again, I, I know it might seem like he's just kind of grabbing hair and cutting. Well, technically that's what I'm doing. I'm not, I don't have much rhyme or reason right now. I have a little vision on keeping the bangs long so it kind of falls down in her face and keeping a nice kind of undercut. So as long as I keep enough hair to work with, you know, I know I'm still kind of keeping in my guidelines of what I want this haircut to look like. So now that I reduced some of that weight, let's go ahead and continue getting her sectioned out. So we're gonna keep a nice, thick occipital bone. So I'm gonna come up underneath here and I'm gonna come straight down. Let's get this a little wet. So my clips have something to grab. And then what I do is I just come straight up, straight up, straight up. Okay, that looks really beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark her off, keeping my bangs where they're at. Let's go ahead, whatever you do to one side, let's go ahead and do to the other. So I'm gonna get her wet. I'm gonna find basically right where I did that other one. And we're gonna go straight up, straight up. Again, I'm just trying to get these hairs out of the way so when I focus on this undercut, I'm not gonna actually get up into that top link that we're trying to keep nice and long for her. We're gonna come to the back and do the same thing. Kind of make the two together. It's a lot easier when you shampoo your client first, completely saturated, a lot easier to kind of do all your parting fairly quickly without having to use a spray bottle. But again, use what you got. So I have a spray bottle today, no shampoo bowl. That's what we're gonna do. So clean lines equal clean haircuts. So make sure we're getting everything nice and pinned up. Beautiful. Okay, so now we have basically three different haircuts. We have this undercut that we're gonna create on the back and the sides. We have this volume and thickness that we're gonna create with some flow on top. And then we have our long bangs that are gonna kind of come and be wispy and fun for her. So you can kind of see, the three different haircuts that we're gonna do. So we're gonna focus right now on the back and the sides and creating that undercut. She has very fine hair, very soft hair, very colored hair. So kind of, it wants to fall through my clippers a little easy. So I'm gonna kind of combat that by using a very soft clipper. Some clippers, such as like the JRLs, hit really hard, super tight, super unforgiving. One swipe, hair's gone. One thing I love about these um, Panasonics right here, they're a very soft clipper. So it really kind of naturally allows hair to kind of fall through my clipper, creating a nice kind of soft look on my fade. So I'm going to start with the five guard. I'm gonna start in the back. I'm gonna tilt her down and I'm gonna work all the way down to about a two guard and we're gonna drop a line on her too. So let's get down to a two guard and then we'll kind of reconvene what we're about to do. So this is a five guard. I have it completely closed. I love these clippers because they are a soft clipper. And that means I could kind of go quick and it's gonna leave me some featheriness, some softness, which is what I want for her, trying to keep that feminine side of her alive, but having a more masculine um, length haircut. So here we go, just kind of coming up with the hair. Her hair kind of grows this way with the hair, so I'm gonna kind of come up. And again, if you notice, I'm going with the hair. So 
going with the hair. You can move that ear down a little bit. Again, don't be afraid to, to move your client in any position that is best for you as long as it's not hurting them. So if I need to move their ear, if I need to move their, their neck around, do it. Though if you feel like it's uncomfortable, you could always ask. Or more importantly, your client will probably tell you if you're being a little aggressive. So I would much rather you try to be aggressive at first to an extent so that you could get the haircut that you want. So let's keep working this out. A lot of this stuff that you see up in here, I'll probably get with a scissor, but I'm just trying to just fan out nice and strong, keeping it soft, keeping it soft, and working my way back down into that back section. Same side over here, move that ear. I'm gonna go with that hair as much as possible. Let's make sure we don't Grab any of those bangs. Again, being very careful. Being very careful. Again, if you notice, I have a nice firm touch on her forehead so she's not falling forward or nodding off on me. I have control. And I'm starting to do a really beautiful haircut and it just feels good for the client, for you to be in control for her to be able to relax her neck a little bit. If you notice, I'm just kind of grabbing. I'm not pressing to hurt my, my guidelines or my, my sectioning. I'm just kind of controlling her head, controlling my client, and more important, allowing energy to flow through her, through me, out to the door. So that's our main objective. Give her a good haircut, relieve some stress, relieve some negative energy, let her open her eyes, see how pretty she looks, how good she feels, and get her on without her day, you know, through her day. And that would be a great, great service for her, a great opportunity for you. And with a haircut and color like this, you know, I know it's gonna get some attention, it's gonna get some compliments, and hopefully more importantly, bring me some new clients. So let's keep working this out. My five guards completely open. Let's, I mean, completely closed. So my next step here in a second, let's move to my four guard and I'm gonna have it halfway open, not all the way open, just halfway, so it has a little bit of give, but it's also really grabbing some hair, because as I get lower and lower in this cut, I want that fade and that tightness to really kind of showcase itself. So here's a four that's halfway open. I'm just barely touching that five guard that I just got off with. I love these clippers, again, just because they have this nice, soft look to them and a nice, soft touch to them. It almost looks like I was doing like scissor work the whole time on this clipper part of the hair. So what that tells me is when I do move into my scissor work, it's gonna be a lot easier to kind of blend, you know, this tightness in with that scissor work because it already kind of looks like I used a scissor on my clipper work. So pretty cool. And, you know, I'm not gonna lie, when I first started cutting hair, I had one clipper, I had one scissor, and that was it. And I still cut really beautiful hair. Um, though as I've gotten better and older, you kind of start to realize why some of these, like Michelangelo and you know Picasso and Rembrandt, they all had multiple paintbrushes, right? Well, because they all had multiple um, purposes, just like these tools, they all have multiple purposes. So don't be afraid to invest in yourself, buy some new trimmers, buy some new clippers, and try some stuff out because like I said, each one of them has a special purpose in the art of reduction and hair cutting. So this is a four. Now I'm closing it all the way. So now this is a pure four. Just working that out more and more. Keeping it nice and low, not getting into her bangs, not coming up into that thick part of her head. working my way around her ear, making sure I'm combing that hair in the direction I want it to go. Beautiful. Continue working down. Again, every time I get around the ear shape, if you notice, I start to really tilt my, my clipper in using only the toe or the heel of the clipper. So when I'm around the ear, using that toe, using the heel, toe, heel, 
really getting in, getting a nice tight around that ear line. Same situation in the neck. I could tilt her down a little bit to really get a little tighter on her neckline. Okay, so now I'm jumping from my four guard to my three guard. And again, I'm only gonna keep it halfway open, not all the way closed, not all the way open, just right in the middle. Tilt her head down again. Now I'm working this three guard all the way into that four guard. Nothing more, really nothing less. Just working that in, nice and easy. I can still hear the hair being taken, so I know I need to be sitting here and being patient. Same situation over here. I'm using the toe of my, my three guard. Clean, 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 clean. Being patient, letting the hair do the talking. We're gonna look down a little bit. Thank you. Keep moving around. Get back over here. Nice and clean. That hair, hair color is really starting to look really cool with this haircut, so that gets me excited. And another thing that I do personally, I talk to myself in my head a lot. Like I, I motivate myself and I lift myself up. So you know, when we're getting, to, hey, this is looking really good, Reeve. You know, keep going. You know, like no one else at the moment. Maybe your your client will kind of give you that little nod, like she she likes it. But during the process, you know, no one's really talking to you. So you kind of need to talk to yourself motivate yourself, be happy with yourself as you go. So as I'm cutting this, you know, I'm thinking, man, this is looking really good. I'm really liking the shape I'm creating. Her hair color is really gonna make this knock out of the park. You know, these are the things I just say in my head just to keep me motivated during the service. So now I have my guard all the way closed, working up and down, keeping that neckline nice and clean. Nice and clean. Following that hairline, way it grows. Oh yeah. So now what I'm doing is I'm I was coming up, so now I'm going tiger paw kind of on it, and I'm just going to go down, kind of knock a little bit of that weight off. And a majority of that weight will come off when I jump on my scissors and texturizing shears. But I have the tool in my hand to do a little bit of the work, so why not knock off some of the work when you have the tool already in your hand? So just coming down, knocking off some of that weight. Knocking off some of that weight. Again, it's all, all the way closed. Let's flip back up. Meet back in the middle. Okay, three guard. Now we're gonna jump on our two guard, all the way in the middle, not all the way open, not all the way closed. And we're gonna start all over again. Cleaning up the corners, using the toe and heel of my clipper to get nice and low. So far so good, really loving it. I love how it's starting to get a little lighter as it gets closer to her skin from that green. It's just gonna give a really cool effect on the haircut. Let's go ahead and clean up over here. Now I'm gonna close it all the way. So now I have a two guard. Just hitting that bottom part of this fade. So far so good, loving it. This is a completely closed two guard right now. Okay, I am gonna go tighter, but what I like to do now, when I get to about a two guard or a one and a half guard, I like to do a quick kind of lineup so I kind of start to really see what's going on here. So I'm gonna take this two guard off for a second. 
Let's blow off our client, get a better visual of what's going on. Can't thank Dyson enough. Great blow dryer, does a great job. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm jumping on my Tori Hanzo hitters, and I'm just gonna kind of create some movement, some guidelines, some, and um, just kind of clean up her neckline. And you're like, again, this is not 100%, this is just a quick cleanup. And like I, the previous videos I showed, I like to start on the corner of the ear. So this is just where I na naturally start my hair and neckline is right here. Again, I'm not trying to white wall her. I want this really close to her ear. Going back and forth, meeting in the middle. And then from here, I could go straight down. Again, this is just a very kind of quick lineup. I'll go back over it a couple of times as I go. But I really just want to kind of see where this fade's going to end, where this haircut's going to begin. And more importantly, if for some reason she just had to run out of the shop, at least it will look presentable with a clean neckline and ear line if she had to just emergency leave. So the quicker I could get a fairly clean ear line and neckline, which I call the foundation of the haircut, I feel as soon as I get that foundation, this, it just, the, the house and the haircut come to life. You know, So once you get that foundation on the house, the walls, roof, all the detail work go in, same thing with the haircut. Once I get that, that foundation in, I could start the rest of my house. So a good way to analogy to kind of look at the way a haircut is built. You need a good foundation before you have good walls, good roof, good structure. So let's just keep working around. Again, you're by the ear, so why not do a little bit of ear detail? She has some really pretty earrings, so be careful that you don't pinch her or anything like that, but I'm just going through getting any bad hairs. I'll go back through with my razor at the end to get any more. But like I said, this is just a really quick lineup. So let's just kind of hit this little C shape right here. Again, I'm not trying to get into those bangs that we marked off from the beginning, remember? So I'm really not trying to get this hair right here. Let me do this again. So that hair that I just marked off, we're trying to keep that as of now. So. So just kind of drip this down, clean up this ear a little bit. Whatever you do to one side, I encourage you to instantly do to the other so you don't forget. Just kind of a, a pet peeve of mine is you just be careful, you know, like you don't want to do one side and completely forget to do the other. So, because what the only person who's really going to notice or feel that is your client. So just be aware of what side you're working on and whatever you do, the goal is to try to go instantly to the other side. So nice little cleanup. So what I wanna do now is I wanna break up this kind of thickness that we created. So our, our five guard was about right here. So now we have about a half inch of hair that is going to be used for this length up here to kind of blend into this tightness down here. Um, I do want this to have a good blend, but I, I want it to have some texture too. So how we create that, let's get her wet again. And I'm going to be very careful and just kind of do this bottom section. So if you notice, I'm just spraying this little area. You get a lot of control when you use water. Okay. So I'm a big fan of scissors. So if I could just, whenever I could use scissors, I'm going to use scissors. I'm a cosmetologist at heart. So again, what I want to do is I do not want to grab her bangs right now. We're going to do that in a bit. So. Again, I'm focusing on this line right here. And I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna point cut. Not really use any of my fingers, I'm gonna use my, my just scissor over comb on this. And I'm just gonna point cut, just slowly make that a little bit more even, blend it into my clipper work. And I love doing just little shatter cutting like this through this little section, just little sh like shingle cutting, point cutting, shatter cutting, whatever you wanna call it. This is a great opportunity right here. Just to blend this out, make it look good, natural. And again, it has some soft softness to it. You know, that's what I'm trying to create for Katie is she has a very 
you know, flamboyant, powerful haircut, you know, and I want to keep that with her, but I want some softness and, and some elegance to this look for her. So if I could kind of create that with some soft texture um, through my, my blend right here, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, I mean, I could use a clipper and, you know, go higher into that, but there's something about just using a little bit of scissor work, um, showcasing your skills, using multiple tools. Um, really brings out the haircut. So whatever you do to one side, let's go ahead and do to the other. Just taking off any heaviness, point cutting, just lifting up a little bit. Everything's really so far looking really good. I sometimes have difficulty with Katie's hair, so I'm really proud that we're just really going smooth right now and looking good for the camera. Again, point cutting, whatever you do to one side, I encourage you to do to the other. And I'm even saying, sometimes I'll even sit here and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. You know, I'll count to 25, 26, 27. However many times it takes me to get that final look, it took me about 29 times there. Guess what? I'm gonna go over here, and my main objective is to do 29 times over here. So we create a very symmetrical, even look on both sides. So it's as deep as that. However many snips you do over here, you might want to do that over here. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it is thicker here than there and you might not, but majority of the time it's, it's a good move. So now that we did both sides, let's move to the middle. And now I'm trying to blend those two together. So this has a, comes out a little corner. Just lifting up, blending these two together. Remember I just brought this side in, that side in. Now I'm marrying the two together. So nice and easy, a lot of point cutting, breaking this up, creating some texture, but also we're creating some fullness and some volume right here. So it kind of dips nice and tight here and it's gonna pop off nice and easy once we get up into this longer hair. So, so far so good. I'm a big fan of just work as you go. So I'm gonna jump on my feather razor and I'm just gonna do a little detail work again through this little blending section, soften it up. Again, very loose. I'm barely holding on to my feather razor. You could almost knock it out of my hand. You don't wanna be gripping this thing. If you grip it and you try to go hard, you're gonna, you're gonna soul patch or you're gonna really get to skin. So a nice soft touch with your feather razor, moving your client how you need her to be for you to give a good job and keep her comfortable. I'm just gonna lift up a little bit right here. Perfecto. So what I wanna do is we're gonna put a line on her too. So anytime we get to about a two guard, I like to drop my line on her. So I'm just gonna to try to capture a cool line. And again, just nice and easy. With that two guard, it gives it enough for this trimmer to grab to really create a nice line. So again, I, this is just all, I'm gonna go back over all this with a razor to really bust it out, but it's nice to just kind of see the shape and the look of the haircut as you go. So again, I'm gonna make this clean, but it's not gonna be 100% by far until the very end detail work. Being patient. I use the very toe of my trimmer to put the line in. If I would go just flat, you couldn't have, it would be hard to do a curve on her. But if I just use that toe, I could really create any kind of line shape that I want. And we're gonna go all the way back with this haircut. Perfect. So then again, I'm gonna go back over that, but now I know where that line is. So what I like to do now is we're gonna kinda of go back over everything just really quickly, okay? So I'm gonna jump back on my clipper and let me go full speed right now. So I'm gonna do a two guard is what we ended off with. I'm gonna open up all the way. Make sure this is a two guard. Yes. And I'm just gonna soften this edge up a little bit. 
I want this to be kind of a tighter fade and then we're gonna have a little bit of thickness here to kind of give us some graduation, give us some depth in her cut. Closing my two guard. Beautiful. Now we're gonna go to a one and a half guard. And again, I'm gonna do the whole situation, not all the way open, not all the way closed. And I'm just gonna stay below that line I just put in. Just stay low. I'm not gonna go much higher than this. I want a nice kind of faded look at the very bottom of this cut. Perfect. Closing it all the way. Staying super, super low this time. If you need to move that ear out of the way, feel free. Just working it out. Okay. Now we're jumping on a one guard. That was a one and a half guard. Halfway open, halfway closed. Shape's really starting to look good for her. Okay, all the way closed now. No farther, keep it nice and low. We want to taper out that little sideburn. I want to taper out this corner. But I want to leave it length through here. So we're going to get tighter here. I'm going to get tighter here. Okay, now we're going to go to a no guard. All the way open now. And I'm just going to sit here and flick nice and clean, super low creating a lot of definition, creating a lot of just, uh, you know, detail and, and intricacy with the haircut when you kind of start really being this diligent when it comes to the fade and how tight you get low. All the way closed now. And now instead of, when it's all the way closed, you have to be really careful when you're coming up like this because you can create a line and you can push that face. So what I like to do, I like to flip now and I'm gonna come down on her, just on that tip. Perfect. Come, same situation, I'm gonna transfer over here and just do this back corner. Okay, now we're gonna switch over to the other side, okay? So whatever you do to one side, you're gonna to do to the other. I had my two guard. And I'm gonna go full, full speed this time, just to kind of show you how I do it. So again, there's no line over here, but whatever you do to one side, I encourage you to do to the other. So all we're not doing on this side is we're not putting in that hard line. Keeping this corners tighter than the rest. All the way closed now, working it in, using the toe, making sure this little corner is the tightest. Tight, 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 all the way up. You notice I'm moving her head in however position I want to make my life easier. Okay. We're gonna jump on a one and a half now. Halfway open. If you notice, I could, I'm again probably being a little nervous being on camera, but she's getting just a little bit of red on her neck. That's probably me being a little heavy with my comb. So just be careful, just breathe. I need to take a couple of deep breaths as well and just calm down. So just, if you see any kind of redness, just like I kind of create on her neck, even though it's not much, it's just a sign that, hey, calm, be slight handed, don't be heavy handed. And just let her remind you to just kind of calm down, let the tool do its job. And, and not to be so heavy handed. And we all get caught up in that. So don't worry, like I said, I just did it and we're human. So I, I do wanna showcase my flaws as much as I can because we're here to learn, so. Yeah, I bruise easy. <laughs> she, and Katie says she does have uh, skin that kind of bruises easily. So it is what it is. So we're gonna work that down. Now I'm jumping on my one guard, halfway open, working on her corners. 
working on her sideburn, tapering that in. I also think everyone has an easy side and a hard side. I feel like this is her hard side and that other side's her easy side. And uh, when that's the case, and when I could kind of tell like, hey Reeve, like this side is definitely harder, I usually just try to spend a little bit more time. That's it, just a little bit more time, spend a little bit more energy on her hard side. Um, I almost like to do the hard side kind of first sometimes because I'm gonna spend more time and energy on that. So when I do get over to her easy side, it's just like flying through it. So don't be afraid to kind of conquer the hardest part of the haircut first. So when you're done with it, the rest of it's easy. So this is a no guard completely open now. Like I said, I'm gonna flip it. And again, the reason why I'm pinching in on her corners, because I kind of want a little bit of length kind of look through this part. So I'm gonna really just kind of taper down these corners and kind of keep a little bit of fun through this. So let's clean this up a little bit more. Nice and clean for our client. Perfecto. Okay, so what I like to do now, we're just gonna keep this almost as is. So I like to do a little bit of clipper over comb, and I'm gonna keep it no guard, I'm gonna have it all the way open, just to give me a little bit of wiggle room in case I mess up. So I'm just gonna go through here and I'm gonna lift, keeping a lot of that length, and just getting a little tighter in these corners. So I just want a little bit more of a blend through here, just in these corners a little bit. So far, I'm really liking what I'm seeing on this fade. And like I said, I'm better with scissors, so if I feel confident with the way the fade's looking, I'm really confident what it's gonna look like when I get to my scissor work. So let's be patient here. Clean up some of this corner. Okay, and then let's just be careful here. We'll put this down and I'm gonna jump on my texturizing shears. And what I wanna do now is I just wanna kinda of soften this up just a little bit more, nothing more, cause I really do kinda of like what I see. So I'm just gonna sit here and just hit the tips. I'm not really touching any of the stuff, I'm just touching this. I'm just kinda of coming up where that part is, rolling out, and I'm just hitting the tips kind of softening up that little edge right there. And so far, just really looking good. So I love that. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. So I'm gonna tilt her head, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Soft, soft, soft. Just hitting those edges. Again, I'm not cutting a lot of the hair through here. It's just this little kind of brim that we created at the top of this. Again, we need some texture, some length, some movement at the very top of this right here. So all this length on top has something to blend with. Clean, clean, clean. Again, we're trying to create a lot of texture in her hair. Her hair is fairly fine, has a tendency to want to go flat on her. So the more texture I could build into this haircut, the better. And then now, last but not least, we're going to sit in the back. I'm gonna tilt your head down, Katie. And we're just gonna hit these corners. Be careful, I actually grabbed a little bit of that top end right there. So that does happen. You know, you don't always have to go back and, and re, redo everything. Just be a little weary, because I'm about to drop everything here in a second. Okay, so I'm really loving that. Again, I don't have a 100% lineup on her yet, but everything is really starting to look really cool and good for her. So let me just touch this little line up again right here. If you notice, I'm always going which way that hair wants to go. Her hair wants to kind of grow down and back through here. So if you notice, I'm just doing the same thing. I'm not fighting her hair. I'm working with her hair. 
trying to emphasize, bring out all the great attributes of her hair. There we go. Okay. So what I want to do now is I'm going to start taking my clips. I want to clean off my client. Because again, anytime we're, we kind of transition to a new part of the haircut, you can see how much hair is on her. It might be on her face. She might be uncomfortable. So why not blow her off a little bit? Close your eyes. No matter what, male client, female client, if you notice, I've always had a positive touch, okay? I'm not trying to be creepy. I'm not trying to seduce her in any way. All I'm doing is still, I, no matter if she's a male or a female, I touch them all the same. A positive touch is a positive touch no matter who you are. So as long as I have a good control on her, I'm allowing that energy to flow through her throughout me, we're in good places. So don't be afraid to, to, to touch your client, even if it's a girl, to have a good, strong, positive touch on your client. So like I said, even though I'm a male, um, I just keep it very professional, but my little touches that I do still serve a purpose even when cutting women's hair. So let's get her re-wet again and kind of see what we're working with. And what I want to do now is I'm going to kind of continue my idea of sectioning. So what I'm going to do is like you kind of saw me do that really kind of low section we have through here. Well, I'm just going to creep up just a little bit higher. So I'm going to go about right here and come straight down. Okay, perfect. So now this is my new guideline. So I'm going to go up here just like we did. Choo-choo. Bring this down. Nice clean lines equal clean haircuts. And then I'm going to section off this, like this. And then again, whatever you do to one side, you should instantly go do to the other. So here in a second, we're going to go to the other side and do this exact same part. Okay. So we just brought about another, about inch and a half, two inches of hair down. Same side over here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to kind of come up just naturally. And I'm going to follow that all the way back. Part up. All the way back to that original part that we just created. Okay. I love working with a vest like this because I have all my tools by me. It really kind of speeds up my process so I don't have to always kind of jump back and forth to my station. Um, so I encourage you, you know, if you're really cutting hair professionally, you're doing a lot of cuts, don't be afraid to get an apron. So now I'm going to get her re -wet so you can kind of see where we're at now. So I have, I dropped some more hair, basically. Um, her hair is a little thicker on this side, it looks like. So just got to be wary of that. And what I want to do now is I'm going to just start sectioning at the corner here. And we're just going to kind of start taking off some of this weight. Nothing crazy. Taking off this weight, you're going to start to see it just kind of start flowing better, start being a little lighter. But I want this hair to have some movement when she runs her hand back. I don't want just a fade on her. Like she needs a little bit of this length up here to play with, to have fun with. So let's just break this up a little bit. We're going to look down a little bit, Katie. Thank you, dear. Point cut, point cut, point cut. And basically what I want is I want this hair to almost, I'm going to use this guideline for my hair. So just follow that line that I created. Just clean up right through here. Clean it right in two. And I just, for some reason, I just feel like that's just going to make a really cool look for her. Katie, this one's badass, girl. Again, point cutting, point cutting, softening this look for her. Nice, deep. 
point cut, point cut. Another technique you could do, feather razor, just using the toe of it. Boom, 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 softening up, add texture, add movement. Okay. So far, I'm really loving how that's moving, how that's working on her. Okay, so whatever you do to one side, right? We're gonna do it to the other. Let's get her a little bit wet through here. Nice touch on her, busting out the scissors, combing it in the direction we want. Remember what we did that first time? Brought up, took some weight out. There's not as much hair on this side as the other side, so just be careful that we keep it symmetrical. So I don't need to cut nearly as much. I just wanted this a little shorter through here. It's a little shorter through here. That's looking better. You can be picky with yourself, push yourself. Don't be afraid to, like I said, angle your client in however shape or position they need to be in to give you the best opportunity to give the look you want to give them. Lifting up, just picking it up. Nice cuts, nice cuts. Again, I cannot thank you guys enough for watching the Art of Reduction. It's been a lot of fun at Trailway Studios and Henry and Greg kind of filming and producing these videos for us. I hope you're finding some wisdom, some information, and more importantly, just some, some confidence in yourself and what you could bring to the table while cutting hair. Like I said, we need, we need better stylists and better barbers. We, we have a lot of sad people out there, a lot of hurting, stressed out, depressed, anxiety-filled people. So if we could give them 30 minutes, a good conversation, a good touch, a good good everything, you know, it's, it, it's only going to make our world a better place if we have better barbers and stylists kind of believing in the idea that it's more than a haircut. If we, I'm giving her hope. I'm giving her confidence. I'm giving her direction and guidance. I'm offering, you know, giving her places where she could eat or need to get help. You know, as a barber, as a stylist of your community, you're, you're doing so much more than just giving them a haircut. So, you know, always remember that and have some pride in what you do because you really are changing someone's life for the better. So let's just kind of look at this. So far so good. Trying to make this nice and symmetrical. Again, there was more hair on this side than the other, so let's just go back up here. Take some more of this weight off of her. And now what I want to do is I'm going to jump on my texturizer. So we're just going to break this up a little bit more. Adding texture, adding movement. And the reverse over here. So just flipping it over. Now what we're going to do is we're going to continue, I assume, dropping some hair down. I think let's blow her off again. We've got quite a bit of hair lined up on her. Perfect. So let's get into the back now. As we drop this down, we're going to bring all this length back. Okay. So I want to keep some of this length. I want to keep some messiness. So I'm going to reduce the majority of this bulk with texturizers. So as long as you sit here, point cut, shatter cut this out, this is going to create a really cool look for my friend Katie here. Again, with these Satori Hanzos, I could just rip through hair very easily. 
create a really cool look for her, creating texture, creating lightness, featheriness, all with one stroke. So far, so good. You doing okay, Kitty? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm vibing. Good. <laughs> so again, I'm just if you know, I'm pretty avant-garde. I, you know, I'm not really grabbing individual hairs. I'm just looking at the hair as a whole, as a whole shape. moving it, positioning it, like if she was really in real life, like running her hands through it. You know, I try to become my client, well, especially once we start kind of getting to, you know, a final shape and the, the shape's really starting to look good. I start to pretend I'm them, running my hands through their hair, pretend I'm, I'm they're out of the shower and I just towel dry them. Like, how does that hair like fall down if there's any hairs that are out of place? Are there any hairs kind of making it look cattywampus, uneven? So I really kind of start to try to be more realistic with how they treat their hair. So if you notice, I'm not even using a comb anymore. I'm just using my hands and kind of kicking it around and kind of seeing how it naturally falls, you know? And I think if I kind of, if I'm pretty aggressive with this and this thing just falls and it has a nice shape and flow, we're getting somewhere. It's, it's, it's a natural look for her head shape, her face shape. It's what her hair wants to do. We're not fighting it. And like I said, if I could kind of move her hair around real natural like this and it just falls into a nice, secure, strong shape, gives me a lot of faith that with a little bit of product control, when she gets home, blow dryer, does her own tools, her own products, it's gonna look awesome. So like, that's how I feel like, there's no such thing as a perfect haircut. So it's like, you know, get 90% close and know that 10% of it could be just them using product to get that hair exactly how they want. So don't be afraid. Don't be upset with yourself if you don't think it looks perfect because it's amazing what a little product can do. But a side note is the product shouldn't make the haircut. The haircut should make the product. So don't always trust or have to use product to get a good haircut. If you're having to use product to get that haircut, you might want to rethink the haircut. That's all I'm saying. Not saying it's, it's not always true. Sometimes they want that kind of haircut and it's hard for them to handle, but they like it. Totally cool. But if it's just a normal person and they're having a hard time with their hair, um, you might want to rethink the haircut you're giving them. So what I want to do now is again, I'm a texture man. So I'm going to jump out my feather razor again and I'm going to tilt her back a little bit. Again, you still notice we have all those bangs still pinned up and I'm just going to shatter cut through this top part that mohawk section with my feather razor. Adding texture, adding movement. It feels good, it feels unique. The guy up the road's not using the feather razor. So the more things I can do that the guy up the road's not doing, I feel like the better odds that I'm gonna be more successful and more people are gonna to come, to come to me. So that's why I'm trying to show you all these different ways to go about a haircut just so you could be a little different than the guy up the road. So I'm looking at the back of her hair now. So far that's just looking really cute to me. Has a lot of shape, no crazy hairs going anywhere and that they shouldn't be. So I'm feeling really confident that this is really kind of coming to life and it's, it's what her hair wants to do. It's fun, it's elegant and I'm excited for her. So. I'm gonna keep breaking this up with my razor. Okay, so now we get to work on the bangs. So let's kind of take our bangs down, kind of see what we're working with. Let's blow her off again. Spray her off again. I know. <laughs> now let's just pick this out real quick. Again, she has a lot of color in her hair. Um, it could get some tangles in it. So if I'm using like a comb or something to kind of get this out, it might pull. So I'm just gonna use a little 
pick real quick. I'm gonna look at this. Okay, so let's get her back to wet. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of reverse this a little bit. It's gonna be kind of unique. So like I said, I marked off all our bangs before. Well, now I'm just gonna come up front and we're gonna come straight down. So I'm just, just a little bit of these bangs at a time. And I'm gonna use a feather razor on her. So I'm gonna use my feather razor. And again, I'm just gonna use the toe of it. We're not taking too much of this length off. I'm gonna go straight down and I'm just gonna hit about a half inch, that's it. I'm gonna bring, come up, section off some more bangs. It's a little tangly with the color, but that's okay, just be patient. Come straight down. I like to use the fine part, the fine part of my comb when I'm doing bangs just because the hair is a little bit more fine. I want to be able to grab it. I'm just going to hit these ends just a little bit. Soften them up, take off any of those dead ends, any of those hairs that are kind of getting tangled with the rest. Same situation. Come back up here, just about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. Get my bangs. And what I'm doing is I'm just using my thumb. I'm putting pressure, the, the feather razor has a guard on it so I can't cut myself or I can't cut her. So I'm just putting pressure on my thumb, putting hair in between my thumb and the blade and kicking out. So that's how I'm kind of creating that tautness is I'm putting the hair down against the blade and my thumb and using my thumb as a backstop for that hair to grab and that blade to grab. Don't be afraid to kind of come up here in the main part of those bangs with that toe of that feather razor, adding some texture, softening it up. Come back up here. Pretty soon we're gonna be getting into um, where we had that original guideline for her bangs, so that's good. Keep pulling these down. Don't get lost in all the hair. If you have to kind of clean off and get some of that loose hair out of the way so you can see exactly what you're doing, feel free. Nice soft touches. Okay, and now last but not least, let's pull the rest of these bangs down. Again, this is very tedious, I understand, though it really does serve a purpose to have these nice clean guidelines, to be tedious, to go slow, to be patient, to trust the process, you know, there's just so much that goes along with this haircutting that I think is just addictive. You know, there's just so, there's so many facets to it. There's so many reasons to do it. People love it. You get opportunity for them to just to relax, to find some headspace, to clear their thoughts. There's just so much beauty that comes with a good haircut. Beautiful. So let's just go up now. I, I, I brought everything forward. So now let's just kind of cross check with some scissors. So I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring them straight up. If I see anything, which I doubt I will, anything out of normal, I'm going to get. Just bring it straight back into the rest of that haircut, making sure there's nothing cattywampus. Everything looks really smooth. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now let's blow her off.
Now we get to do all the detail work and the devil's in the detail. So the more detail you could do with your client, the better. So I'm going to get my foil shaver. I'm going to tilt your head back. And I'm going to come straight on top of this. Getting any baby hairs off her forehead. Just going with her hair. And all this is doing is grabbing any bitty frizzies, all those baby hairs that are just kind of sticking out, causing problems. And it doesn't take any length off at all. As long as I'm going with the hair here, perfect. And it's gonna really create a nice, pretty look for her. All those little bitty frizzies, dead hairs that might you know, look good now, but might get a little crazy in five days. You know, those are the hairs I'm trying to go for now. The ones that are gonna come out in, you know, five in a week or so and really kind of be our problematic troublemakers. So So one of my favorite techniques, I just started doing this maybe four or five months ago. Um, I don't get the opportunity to cut too much black hair. So I go home and I do some studying, I research black hair. And what I do is I come back to my shop and try to apply some of the things I learned on black hair to my white clients. And um, this is one of the techniques I learned from that. And it's just kind of cool to kind of use different techniques on different hairs and kind of try to bring them to what you work on the best. So this is just me trying to add some other texture and flair to my hair cutting. I'm gonna drip this all the way down. Okay. So like I said, that first initial guideline I did with my Tori Hanzo trimmers Let's go back over everything, okay? So, like I said, we're gonna, let me hit her with just a little bit of hairspray up front. Okay, so we're gonna just, I'm not lining her up, I'm, I am gonna go through, and if I see any baby hairs, I'm gonna get them out of there. So even though she's a girl, probably doesn't have too much, you know, facial hair, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go through just like I would with a male client and line up everything and kind of just primp her, make her feel good, and really get all these little bitty baby hairs and fine hairs off her forehead and just make her look soft and make that skin look like porcelain. Again, I know she doesn't have much hair, but like just a little bit on the cheekbone. Tell me I don't have a beard? No, you don't have a beard yet. Ear work, let's kind of line up this a little bit more. Ear, round the ear. Let's get this neckline a little bit sharper. Whatever you do to one side, let's instantly go to the other. What I like to do is I follow below the, where the eyebrow ends, I go straight up. That's kind of like my line. So this is her eyebrow. I just take my trimmer and I go straight up with it. And I just feel like that's just a natural point of emphasis that creates a really nice, you know, forehead, kind of frames the face naturally. So that's just another little trick of the trade is just follow that, that eyebrow straight up and then straight over for your hairline. And it really does create a really nice look. So I'm not kind of, I'm not liking this little hair right through here. I feel like that's gonna kind of stick out on her a little bit more. So let's go through here and tame that down a little bit more, just like that. Again, this is all about being picky, being detailed, oriented, like finding the little hairs. As you get closer and closer to being done, I'm looking for one bad hair instead of like a bunch of bad hair. So that's the beauty of the art of reduction. You start big, just ripping hair off, but as you get closer and closer to done, 
you start looking for just one or two bad hairs instead of thousands of bad hairs. So just be patient, be diligent. And that's looking really good already. Let's clean up this, clean up around here. Get around her neck. Let's see what the back looks like. Feel free, you know, when you're working around the neckline, take off that neck strip. Nice, soft, gentle touches. Not trying to scrape her like I did earlier on. Being patient. Okay. So from here, let's blow her back off. And then I'm going to do some razor work. So today I'm gonna to be using the Hans de Fuco shave cream. It has a really nice vanilla mint smell to it. Um, I like to pump it out on my front of my hand like this. I just kind of make a, a line like this. She doesn't need much because she's a girl. So I'm just gonna, again, I'm just gonna kind of do a little bit of line up here. Make sure to grow out my beard next time. Thank you, I appreciate it. It'll be better for TV. So I'm just gonna follow that hairline with this gel. I'm going to put some right over that line, just like that. I'm gonna follow it back on her neck, like this. Follow up her neck, like this. I come on her corners, like this. A little bit on the sideburn, right in the middle of the eyebrow. So that's usually where I like to put my shaving cream for when I do necklines and ear lines and face lines. I do it a little differently when I do the beard. Okay, so let me get a hot towel for her real quick. And I like to kind of fold it long ways like this, kind of wrap it up once. These smell really good, Greg. And then I'm gonna drape her up. What I like to do is I like to use my clips. I do one in the corner there, one in the corner there. Kind of naturally keeps it there so they can kind of relax. And I like to usually go to my station, kind of clean everything up, get my razor ready, locked and loaded with a new razor as that towel sits. So I already have my razor ready, but usually I'll be over here kind of cleaning up everything, getting everything to look good. Cause really when I, when she opens her eyes and checks out her haircut, I, I want my station to look clean, just like her haircuts look clean. I want everything around it to kind of resemble what we just did. So I will sit here and get my station completely in order as she sits under that towel. Cause usually they have their eyes closed, they're relaxed and then they all of a sudden they open their eyes again and everything's clean, all the hair's blown off of them. Looks really good. So, the biggest part of this cut really is that line we created. So when I drip, pop off this towel, that's the first thing I wanna to touch with this razor. So it's nice and hot, the skin's ready, that, that shaving cream did its job, and it, it's just the hardest cut. So I'm gonna focus on that line first and then after that, I'll go through and do a little lineup on her. So let's pop her off. I know. You're so warm and toasty, though. Pop that off on her. And then we're going to just sit here. And I'm just going to have a really soft touch. Using my thumb to pull right up on top of my blade. I like to focus on my breathing, calm. Be careful that you don't use the very tip of your blade. A lot of times that's where it gets you, it cuts you. 
I'm going to start all over. Let me start back up here. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Make sure you what we're working with here. Nice and easy. Just focus on your breathing. She has a very soft skin, so you just have to be super careful. So now I'm just gonna do just a quick little lineup through here, through here, just nice and easy. Be very safe. I'm gonna flip her around real quick. Again, I'm just applying pressure to that blade. Clean off your blade. Like I said, I put a little bit of shaving cream right on the, she doesn't have a unibrow, but it's just a nice little spot to clean up right by the tip of the eyebrows. And then we're gonna clean up this neckline. And then what I'm gonna do is I wanna drop her cape a little bit and get her neckline. So So I'm gonna blow her off. I like to use my feather razor right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and kind of clean her up real quick. Get all that gel off of her, any product, any hair. I'm gonna start blow drying her. So I'm gonna put in just a little bit of hair potion as I blow dry her. And what's great about this, it's like a powder that kind of turns into a little bit of a wax. You don't need too much right now. And let's just start blow drying her. Again, just trying to get that moisture out. Add some lift. And then one thing I do a lot is I use my blow dryer as a tool to cut hair as well. So that's what I'm gonna do here in a second after I get some of this moisture out of her hair is I'm gonna use this blow dryer to kind of do some detail work. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So I'm gonna use the cold setting, always. I'm gonna use my texturizers. Thinning shit, I'm just gonna. Letting the wind kind of showcase any of the bad hairs.
Letting it showcase any of the bad hairs. Allowing that hair potion to kind of give it some texture as you cut, which is nice. Lightening it up, have a lot of wiggle room, a lot of momentum here with this cut. <laughs> so one of my favorite techniques no one does it it does a lot of it serves a great purpose looks cool it's fun to do have you look straight down Okay, so let's get all this loose hair off of her now. Okay, so now we have her combed out. She's dry. I'm looking at this naturally. Hair's looking really good. Put a little bit of product in this and really kind of show off this haircut. So today we're going to be using Claymation by Hans de Fuko. Um, very tacky product. So what I like to do is I get that product out with my fingertip. It's kind of aggressive product to get out with. Again, I put it to my left palm like this, get it off my index finger. But then I use that index finger to muddle up my product. I'm putting a lot of force right here, make it creamier, make it softer. And then from here, I keep my fingertips out and I do a circular motion. And then from here, I put my fingertips in and do like a praying mantis motion. Get all that product on my hands. And I'm gonna start in the back. And I kind of, like I said, I just kind of make an exterior shell at first. Trapping this haircut in. And then from there, we're gonna add, get that texture out. And then from here, I like to add just a little bit of air control. And there we go. So again, I just wanna thank you so much for viewing the Art of Reduction. I want to thank Katie and Trailway Studios for the opportunity to be here. And just to show you that having women in your barbershop is a great thing for, for diversity, for opportunity, and just to have a great relationship with some really amazing women in your community. So thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments, and hopefully you join back with us next time. So thank you so much, and we'll see you later.